Feynman, why Ken's wrong. Richard Feynman is a frequent target of Ken Wheeler's attacks. Find out why the groundbreaking physicist and Nobel laureate's ideas are so threatening to the angry photographer and his pseudoscience. Richard Feynman was one of the most celebrated scientists of the 20th century. He attended both MIT and Princeton, where he earned his PhD in 1939, studying a branch of particle physics called quantum electrodynamics, QED. In 1943, Robert Wilson, one of the Manhattan Project's administrators, invited him to support Robert Oppenheimer's team developing the atom bomb because of his expertise and his reputation. After the war, Feynman joined Cornell University as a professor of theoretical physics. His ongoing research won him the 1965 Nobel Prize for Physics. Ken Wheeler is a particularly harsh critic of Feynman. He sneeringly calls him the god of quantum, while denouncing the science of quantum mechanics as the cult of bumping particles. The angry photographer focuses virtually all of his anti-Feynman vitriol on a viral YouTube video clip. It's from a series of six 30-minute interviews Feynman gave for the BBC program Fun to Imagine. One segment deals with magnetism and a YouTuber posted the short clip Kentucky Ken mentions from there. Here's how Feynman explains magnets. All the electrons are spinning in the same direction. They all get lined up and they magnify the effect of the force until it's large enough at a distance that you can feel it. But it's a force which is present all the time and very common and is in a basic force. This is a plain language off the cuff explanation of the standard theory of magnetism, which states that magnetism arises from the alignment and movement of microscopic magnetic dipoles within a material. These dipoles are tiny magnetic fields generated by the alignment of the spins of individual electrons within atoms. In a magnet, such as a bar magnet, these dipoles align predominantly in the same direction, resulting in a macroscopic magnetic field. Despite Feynman's accessible and accurate explanation of magnetism's cause, Kentucky Ken claims that the video clip proves Feynman doesn't understand magnetism, at least not well enough to explain it simply. As Ken Wheeler puts it, if you think he explains it, then you really, really, really failed the IQ test. The angry photographer's assessment of Feynman's knowledge comes from misinterpreting an elaborate analogy in the video. Drawing on Aristotle's four types of causes, Feynman spends time explaining how something happens, such as why a fictional Aunt Minnie is in the hospital. The Nobel laureate goes on to explain that she's there because she broke her hip. Then he explains that she broke her hip by slipping and falling on the ice. Feynman tells us that at another level, she's in the hospital because an ambulance took her there. His next level of understanding involves explaining that Aunt Minnie fell because ice is slippery, and so on. He may belabor this analogy, but he explains that the deeper a thing is, the more interesting it is. He charmingly tells the interviewer, I'm not answering your question, but I'm telling you how difficult a why question is. Speaking of why questions, there's a reason why the Theoria Apophasis host tries so hard to discredit Richard Feynman on a personal level. Feynman's QED research thoroughly explains electromagnetic interactions, contradicting and completely disproving Kentucky Ken's pseudoscientific speculations about how magnets work. We provide a complete refutation of these misconceptions under magnetism, why Ken's wrong. To summarize, science has proven the ether doesn't exist, Ferro cells display optical rather than magnetic media, and rather than being a point source object, magnets have poles because of their aligned electron spins. The angry photographer attributes Feynman's reputation and influence to his supposed persona as the coolest cat out there. It's true that Feynman was charming and popular with students and faculty, 
His teaching methods were ahead of his time, and he had some eclectic hobbies, including playing the bongos, painting, and giving public lectures aimed at lay people. Even so, Kentucky Ken's claims about Feynman are as inaccurate as his assessment of the fun to imagine interview. He says Feynman came to class dressed really nice, atypical of a professor. Feynman's fashion sense was unremarkable, if rather casual, for the times. There was nothing bohemian or hip about his appearance. Ken Wheeler accuses Feynman of lecturing while holding a bourbon on the rocks in his hand. He claimed there's video of it on YouTube and all over the place. We can find no such videos nor any record anywhere of Feynman drinking alcohol while teaching. This isn't surprising since nobody as intelligent as Feynman would risk his career by allowing anyone to film him doing that. James Glick's best-selling biography, Genius, tells us that Feynman gave up alcohol in 1952 because he was afraid it would affect his mental ability to do his work. That was long before he became famous enough for anyone to film his classes. It's unclear where Kentucky Kent heard these claims, but at best they're urban legends. At worst, he's deliberately smearing the reputation of a deceased Nobel laureate. Bertrand Russell wrote that, If an opinion contrary to your own makes you angry, that is a sign that you are subconsciously aware of having no good reason for thinking as you do. Richard Feynman's work shows that Ken Wheeler has no reason to think. He's the first person in history to explain magnetism. The angry photographer will stop at nothing to defend his pseudoscientific claims. Well, nothing except backing them up with facts and evidence.